north of Argentina which we have heard a lot of good things about we have just arrived um, a Cafayate Cafayate which is outside Salta and just the ride over here was like worth the trip alone right yeah I feel it, it was the, the I think the most beautiful uh, ride I've taken road trip I've taken really beautiful I, I would recommend going here just to take the ride from Salta to Cafayate like amazing the colors are so bright like the green against the red against the blue and I love the formations of the of the mountains here it's it's like a, an uh, adventure yeah it is it's like walking into a Hollywood movie uh, slash uh, <laughs> an adventure like a fairy tale it's really really nice it, it looks like Star Wars a lot of places yeah reminds me of it and now we're staying here in Cafayate one more uh, day uh, exploring this and hopefully we'll meet some nice people we'll see but now let's jump back into the beautiful scenes of <laughs> this nature here it's north crazy. north nature of uh, Argentina <laughs> Garganta del Diablo, the Devil's Throat. The Devil's Throat. And this is like the last thing we do here in in the road from Salta to Cafayate, which has been an amazing experience. But this road is worth going here just for the ride, right? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and the landscape, it doesn't stop for like 60 kilometers or something like that. You have like amazing view after amazing view after amazing view. Yeah, it's just... It's just unbelievable how nice it is, uh, the views are, like, you think this is the top and then it gets even even better yeah. than that. And you, we like, we have the feeling like, okay, we need to stop, we need to stop at every corner just to take a picture or look at something <laughs> or it was just amazing. Not only did we see amazing things, we saw, we saw, we are seeing this and we saw the uh, theater, which was called. Amphitheater. Amphitheater. We saw a rock that looked like Titanic a bit. Yeah. And and we saw the tree crosses. That is a nice viewpoint with a lot of tourists. Yeah. And we also saw uh, an abandoned village because the train stopped going here. So there's like endless opportunities for thing you can explore here. But we also met a nice couple at the hostel we stayed in. Mm -hmm. And we asked uh, them some questions about how it is to be Argentinian today and how they deal with the crazy inflation that is going on in this country. So let's uh, see what they have to say. ¿Cómo es viajar para argentinos ahora? Para el argentino, no sé si para todos, pero para muchos argentinos eh, les, les cuesta ahorrar plata, eh, no sé, irse de vacaciones. Uh -huh. Ahora eh, es muy difícil irse afuera, al exterior. Eh, por eso muchos vacacionan acá en, en el país. Uh -huh. Particularmente yo, para poder tomarme estas vacaciones acá por el norte de Argentina, eh, estuve ahorrando un año para poder viajar. Y de hecho no, no es que en nuestras vacaciones nos dimos grandes lujos, sino que medio como que tratamos de, de abaratar lo, los costos. Buscamos precios. Buscamos precios, eh, nos fijamos a ver si nos convenía o no. ¿Cómo puedes ahorrar en un país que tiene tanta inflación? Particularmente yo siempre trato de hacer una o dos salidas nada más en el mes eh, para poder ahorrar y poder tener mis vacaciones. Sí, otra forma también es comprar dólares, comprar moneda uh -huh. extranjera para que la plata, el peso argentino no se devalúe. Entonces ahorramos en dólares y después cuando nos vamos a vacaciones vendemos esos dólares a otra persona, nos dan los pesos y ahí nosotros podemos gastar en, lo, en las vacaciones que querramos hacer. Pero no son ilegales todavía. No, no. 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 Eh, ¿Algo entre? ¿O cómo se llama? 
eh, en realidad es, es ilegal. Para el gobierno es ilegal uh -huh. comprar, comprar dólar blue, pero, pero en realidad... Lo compra todo el mundo. Claro, lo compra todo el mundo. Sí. La gran mayoría de Argentina compra dólar blue. Y, y es la manera para sobrevivir. Sí, sí. Uh -huh. ah, sí. Pues, ¿qué piensan ustedes que los, como turistas, como nosotros, estamos aquí pagando, uh -huh. de hecho, el mitad de lo que pagan ustedes? Porque nosotros tenemos también el sí. dólar blue. Uh -huh. Y para nosotros significa que todo el mundo es como mitad del precio, y no el doble precio. Uh -huh. O sea, no, no es que a mí me, me moleste o me dé bronca o algo, al contrario. O sea, por un lado me gusta también que conozcan nuestro país, porque es muy lindo. Eh, pero no... O sea, es como que yo si tuviese la posibilidad de, de ir a otro país, que también me es mucho más barato que, que el mío, no... El problema es Argentina, no me... que, que hay mucha inflación claro. y la moneda está devaluada. O sea, el problema somos nosotros, no los extranjeros que vengan acá. sleeping in a tent in North Argentina. Uh, it was, wow, it was some experience. <laughs> wow, I never experienced so much weather. Like, it was like lightning and thunder and moonshine and starlight and dogs and horses. <laughs> so and much rain nature. And rain, <laughs> And rain. So much nature. But I slept really good. Oh, to be in a tent, I slept really, really good. And now, yeah. But we got there by driving through this extreme forest road. Like the nature, like how it changed from the amazing Gavayata nature to the nature that we are kind of in now. It was like extraordinary yeah and now we'll wake up pack down drink some coffee pack down our tent drink some coffee and then drive to uh, i'm not sure where we're going you do who well yeah oh my there's several things north in our general disease so let's do that <laughs> W-O-W, <laughs> take a look at this. <laughs> this is worth the trip to uh, Argentina. I've never seen anything like this. This is out of this world. They say that it's one of the wonders of the world. I would just say it's one of the wonders out of this world. <laughs> yeah, it's really out of this world. <laughs> Whoa! Oh. The mountain with 14 colors, or in Spanish? El, um, el cero de 14 colo colores. So if you're going to Argentina, don't even think twice. No. Think once or half. Go here and take a look at this <laughs> view. You won't see it as good on the video as we see it with our own eyes, but it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's so incredible. I've never seen anything like this. From uh, a lot of big words to some serious talk, if you're going up here, you are staying, then you're probably staying in the town of 
Humahuaca. Humahuaca, which is, how would you explain it? Uh, how would you describe it? Humahuaca is a very small but very nice touristy place with a lot of things that you can buy on the streets. If you, like us, are traveling with a car and you think, okay, but I'm going up here to the Catorce Colores, then you should actually downtown uh, where, the tra where, the, where the bus station is, you should uh, pay someone to drive you up because the road is really bad and we were so glad that we didn't bring our rental car. <laughs> yeah, it would probably have been broken or had some damages if we go, go, went up there. It cost for us now 3,000 pe pesos per person. With inflation, we don't know what it will no cost idea. when you watch it, <laughs> but it's worth it right now. Yeah. And now we're going to watch this view and then go down and find more adventures. But first, just let's enjoy this view, right? Yeah. <laughs> filming inside the car because there's too much wind we're at 4,000 meters above sea level yeah and this nature we have said it before but it's like breathtaking yeah uh, this is like in the middle between uh, Humawaka mm -hmm. and uh, on the other side Irusha. Irusha which is a town you have to drive on a dirt road for like two hours yeah it's not too long but, but yeah have to drive really slowly. You said it was the coolest road trip that you have ed ever done. Yeah, by far the coolest road trip. And then out of the blue, at this town, Iruja appears, <laughs> where they have yeah they live regular lives. They have stores. They have restaurants. They have bakeries. Yeah, it's kind pools. of yeah. It's just strange. But then. You can take your backpack. You can drive, but then you need like an off-road car. Yeah. So we took our backpacks and walked for seven kilometers, continued inside in over the valley. And we had to cross the river. I think we counted nine times. Yeah, nine times. And then out of the blue, there's another town, which is called uh, San uh, San Isidro de Iruja. <laughs> San Isidro de Iruja, which is also like this tiny mountain village. Yeah, very cute. The life there seems very slow, very tranquilo. Si. But they have places that you can you can sleep there if you want. They have hospitales, they have uh, restaurants, and we put up our tent. Yeah, slept in our tent, which was amazing. So now we're soon finished with north of Argentina, but we might have one more stop, so... Cars behind us are really struggling to get up this uh, extreme road. Uh, we have just gone up, down, and up again because we went to the salt flakes, and it was also out of this world. <laughs> I have never seen something like that. It looked like ice, or maybe like yeah, I thought it would be ice and maybe sand, but it was hard as salt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really, really hard, and they had digged out these trenches where it is really uh, clear water 
and it's just an ama almost like you're on another planet, which I think is maybe the theme of north of Argentina. <laughs> yeah, of another planet. I, I, uh, we, we paid uh, like a little bit for a guide who guided us out, so we actually drove the car on the salt flake out to this trenches. Uh, it was extremely cool, and we were there like at, at sunset, so we were kind of alone. Rushing down out to find a hostel and then crossing his fingers that they have a room for us. And then we're leaving north of Argentina, so this is goodbye to north of Argentina. Would you rate it from 1 to 10? 10 out of 10, maybe 11. Amazing! 12? <laughs> and see you at our next destination, which we actually don't know yet. <laughs>